Hi everybody, my name is Doug from Dugras Reports. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Chase Ultimate Rewards Travel Portal, specifically as it relates to renting cars. Have you ever wondered to yourself, if I have Chase Ultimate Reward Points to use, is it better for me to go through the Ultimate Rewards Portal? Or is it better to just go find a rental car on my own, either by going to Avis or Hertz, or maybe going to a site like Expedia or Travelocity or Hotwire, or something like that. Uh, because if it's actually cheaper through one of those direct methods, you could always take the points as cash instead of buying the rental car in the portal. So we're gonna be doing some comparing and contrasting to get us that answer. Um, we'll be looking at three different cities in the United States in a typical car rental scenario. So what are the assumptions that I'm gonna use for that scenario? Well, first, a six day car rental is what we're gonna look at. Um, secondly, we're going to be looking at a full-size car or larger. Think of a family of four. That's what I have. So you don't want to cram into, you know, an economy car or something like that. So at least a full-size, maybe a minivan, maybe a small SUV, something at least full-sized. We're not picky about brands, but we don't want something with a terrible customer service review. So uh, I'll use a little bit of judgment to make sure it's something reasonable. Thirdly, this is assuming that for comparison purposes in the Chase Ultimate Rewards Portal, you're using either the Chase Sapphire Preferred or the Chase Inc. Business Preferred. Those are two of the three cards that give a modifier or a lift up when you make travel purchases in the Chase Portal. Uh, the Sapphire Preferred and the Inc. Business Preferred have a 1.25 modifier. In other words, if you have $100 worth of points, it has $125 worth of spending power. Uh, so 10,000 ultimate rewards points um, would get you $125 worth of stuff. Uh, if you have the Sapphire Reserve, which has a 1.5 modifier, it would be even better than what's in this video, but I think this will give you the gist and the tools to do your own research. And then the fourth assumption is I'm going to try my best to compare the pre-tax price to the pre-tax price. Some websites, uh, whether they're directly with the rental car company or with the um, travel sites like Expedia, will give you the pre-tax price. Some give you the after-tax price. Some give you both. So you may not always see both prices on the screen, uh, but rest assured I am doing the comparison pre-tax to pre-tax to the best of my ability. So Chase Ultimate Rewards will be compared to what? Well, we're gonna look at three different rental companies directly, Avis, Enterprise, and Hertz. And then for travel sites, we're gonna take a look at Travelocity, Expedia, Hotwire, and Orbitz. And we're gonna find the winner of each one of those categories, direct car rental through a travel site and the Ultimate Rewards portal for each of the three target cities, and we'll see who wins. Let's dive in. The first city that we'll be looking at is Phoenix, Arizona. Actually, it's Tempe, Arizona. There's a specific hotel I had my eye on really close to the Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport in Tempe. So I used that for my base of comparison and picked a six day period a few months out from now. Uh, if we take a look at a direct car rental scenario where we go to the website of the company, Avis had the best deal with six days in a full-size car, $210. Looking at a travel website, the winner was Travelocity, which had a full-size car, such as a Chevy Malibu, for $133 for the entire period. Actually, this is a week rental, but since we have it six days, that's less than a week, we'd get the $133. And then in the Chase portal, Thrifty would give us a mid-size minivan for what they have listed as $313, but uh, we do have to take taxes out of that. So you look down the corner there, it says take out 15% for taxes, and we're at about 21,300 points. That's $213 in terms of uh, the equivalent cash price, if you took the cash instead, uh, for the same points. And uh, even with the modifier, um, the Chase Portal is really bad here for whatever reason. The winner is the full-size car from Hertz that we get through Travelocity. So for Phoenix, 
you want to go directly to a travel website, specifically Travelocity, to get the best value. All right, let's take a look at the next city. Our next sample city is Boise, Idaho. And in Boise, Idaho, we're going to have a six-day rental. Looking first directly at rental car websites, the winner is Avis, once again, with a full-size car uh, for $191. If we go out to travel websites, the best deal is a full-size car from Hotwire, which comes to $22 a day. Uh, the whole time we're staying there, that comes to $132. Now, some of my figures, I'm rounding to the nearest whole dollar. So if it doesn't quite come out math-wise, that's why. But it's very, very close. And then looking at the Chase portal, in this case, uh, we can find a full-size car through Thrifty. And if we do all the modifiers and everything, take out about 15% for taxes, which is what it displays on our websites, we're at 11,790 points, which is about $118. So this time in Boise, the Chase Ultimate Rewards portal is actually the best value. Um, not by much, only by uh, about 100, uh, excuse me, only by about $14, but it is the winner. All right, last sample city. Washington Dulles area. So I'm talking about the Dulles Airport on the outskirts of Washington, D.C. Thinking maybe you're flying in there to see the sights and your first night you're going to stay in a motel right next to the airport and then go into Washington, D.C. the next day. Let's see what the best rental car options are. If you go directly to a rental car website, Hertz is the winner. You can get a full-size car for $151 for the entire week. That's pretty good. If you go out to the travel websites, Expedia is the winner this time with a uh, compact SUV for $225 for the whole week. That's quite a bit more than going directly to Hertz for some reason. That was odd to me. Even though Expedia had uh, full-size cars and their results, it was cheaper to go directly to the Hertz website. And by the way, I did all these checkings today. So this is all within the same day. I'm not comparing different time frames. I'm comparing the same date in the future, and I'm looking at them all today on the same day. And then if you check the Chase portal, uh, a midsize SUV from Thrifty, after all the modifications, would be about $174 worth of points. So in this case, uh, the Washington Dulles Airport area, Hertz directly, directly through the Hertz.com website is the least expensive. And no, there's no membership or anything. This is just checking out as a guest. So what did we learn here? Well, in summary, when looking at six-day rentals, you will notice that for Phoenix, the best price was through Travelocity, going directly to a travel-related website. For Boise, the best value was the Chase Ultimate Rewards Portal. And for Washington Dulles, the best option was Hertz, directly to the Hertz website. So you might be thinking to yourself, Doug, I didn't learn anything. All three of those were different. Well, I hope you learned this, and that is that doing your research pays off. Uh, depending on where you're going and depending on what dates you're going there, it might be cheaper to go through the Chase Ultimate Rewards portal and use your 1.25 modifier or 1.5 if you have the reserve. It might be cheaper to check out sites like Travelocity, Orbitz, Hotwire, Expedia, etc. I checked some others as well like uh, Booking.com. Didn't find anything better on those, by the way. Um, and in some cases, it might be cheapest to go directly to the rental car website like Hertz.com or Avis.com or Enterprise.com and just see who has the best value. It's just plain going to vary. So do your homework. Another thing to consider is when I've been looking at using points, ultimate reward point for an upcoming trip, it seems like in general, the ultimate rewards portal has the least amount of value for rental cars. So in some cases, even if it's kind of close, like maybe it's only a 10 or $15 savings, um, unless you're in a position where you can only afford to travel if you use points, you might want to strongly think about just saving your points and just paying the cash price. Um, you can put it on your favorite credit card and work towards a minimum spend or a travel bonus there or something like that. So bottom line, if you're renting a car, do your research. It might be best to go any of these three different directions. I hope that video was helpful for you folks. If you've not yet subscribed to this channel, 
please do so. And if you already have, I appreciate you for it. Please also click the thumbs up button. Let me know what your comments are. Have you had success with any of these particular places? Uh, if you want to know how to get a better deal through Avis, for example, I have a video on that. And you can click on that. Thanks for your support, folks.